At the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, is that happening today? The vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many. The combinations of the poor classes for the defense of their interests and claims. Brother, everything from terrorism to the man walking down the street with a poster is that movement today. The spirit of unrest, of riot, and bloodshed. The worldwide disseminations of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution. All are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which confronts France. Brethren, there is a movement today. The base of it is spiritualism. People are crying human rights again and the movements of Christianity are right involved in those cries. In Revelation 17 verse 8 we read about this movement. The beast that thou sought, sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. This is the same source of the beast of Revelation chapter 11 which the spirit of prophecy tells us was the atheistical spiritualistic power that controlled the government of France. Today it's rising on the scenes and ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall what? Hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. The very power that she wants to ride upon, the very power that she feels is going to set her up above the nations, is the very power secretly that is working for her complete destruction. And brethren, her destruction is not just the destruction of the Catholic Church, but she is the mother, and the harlots are the Protestant world. And all of Christianity is going to be involved in a tremendous war and a slaughter at the hands of the new spiritualistic movement that is taking place today. <clears throat> Ancient spiritualism had to work in secret and was a novelty to many people for many years. But recently it has become the fastest growing movement in the world. Since 1976 and 77, the teachings of witchcraft have become the predominant religion in the world today. In this book by Marilyn Ferguson, The Aquarian and Conspiracy, we are taught that in this day and age, the greatest minds, the most powerful people in the world, and people on the grass level are organizing. They're working together, though maybe unseen, in legislative halls and in schools, in Christian churches. They are working together to bring about a great occult revival and a taking over of the world in this new age. And folks, they have control of the wealth. They have control of the scientific secrets. There is nothing that they cannot accomplish when their word says go except that God is holding back the winds. These people can control your mind and control your heart. Ellen White tells us that Satan will work through the sciences of psychology, phrenology, and animal mesmerism. He will use hypnotism on the masses at the end of time. Where is our protection against this great final effort? Brethren, it's only that we are possessed entirely by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. We could not expect to escape the delusion that's coming and the overpowering delusion of Satan as long as one part of our being is still on Satan's ground. We have got to come up to the fullness of Christ's righteousness. Christ has to come into his heart as we read in Desire of Ages, page 324. He'll come in and he'll make our heart his possession and he'll make it his fortification and determine no power should be known in it but his own and he will make that heart impregnable to the assaults of Satan. At some point in the experience of the Adventist people, we've got to face the fact that we have to settle into the truth of justification so that we can no longer be moved. And God can end this work. 
This mind of Ignatius Loyola is the dark, vile mind of the Dark Ages. And yet, through the initiation and through the exercises of Loyola, that mind from the Dark Ages of papal supremacy controls the most brilliant minds in the world today. And science, Ellen White tells us, is to lead the world into the papacy as superstition and ignorance once led it into the papacy in the years before. Their schools and their universities cover the world. And in the United States, they're everywhere. Thousands of Jesuits continue to graduate every year. And now the people have no knowledge of what their plans are for the world. Uh, brethren, I believe that we are unconquerable if we are part of the movement of the Holy Spirit in this last age. But if you are not, and you don't know for sure that your salvation is secure at this time, you will not be able to stand the pressures that are coming. We know that if we are faithful to our calling, that through us and through other means, God will be able to pluck brands from the burning that were foremost in the cause of Satan at the end of time. And one of these brands was a man by Lacunza, a Chilean Jesuit. This is Lambeth Palace in London, and there's a library there that's set up for priests and prelates. Jim and I, through I believe a miracle of God, were allowed to go in there and study, and there were priests and nuns around us. We asked the librarian to find us these two books, plus a book by John Darby. These books about the coming of Christ were written by a Chilean Jesuit, La Cunza, finding his way in the 18th century to the Bible. He studied it. Probably as a man entranced, he began to understand the nearness of Jesus' coming. And so he began to write. He went through all of the doctrines of that time on the coming of Christ and proved them all false. And when he did present his view of the coming of Christ, you know what he presented? He presented the truth that Jesus Christ was soon coming to take His saints from this earth. That He would take them up with Him into the heavens and there they would reign with Christ for a thousand years. After this period of time when all are destroyed on this earth, He would come back with them after the millennium and He would judge all the wicked, raising them from hell and from the dead. Of course, he didn't fully understand the immortality of the soul and some of our doctrines, but brethren, the publication of these books in the 1820s and 30s led to the great revival in England and the looking forward to Jesus' coming. I believe that these men, many of them, and others that are involved in, in movements that they believe is right, can be one if our people will wake up and do the work God has called them to do. <clears throat> There are safety measures in the Bible to avoid their influence on us and on our churches. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 we read, But though we who are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be cursed or damned. Verse 9, As we said before, so say I now again, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed or damned. If we followed the Bible, we would not allow heresy in our ranks. And a great suffering would be saved for many of the people of God. In 2 John, verse 9, we read, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what is it? The everlasting gospel of three angels' messages that were delivered to the Adventist people. Receive him not into your house, not into your place of worship, and neither bid him Godspeed or you'll be a partaker of his evil deeds. How many men, how many times have we allowed ourselves to be subjective to reasoning that has destroyed the Adventist faith? Jesus now is a high priest in the heavenly sanctuary in the most holy place. There he waits to finish his work in you and in I. Christ is the one that holds his angels in his hands. That's a symbol of all his people that are faithful to him giving his message. He holds them there. They're in his hand and no one can take them out. 
Christ the sacrifice is beside each one of us today through the ministration of our high priest. As he ministers his Holy Spirit to us, the death of Christ becomes our death. The world is sacrificed unto us and we unto the world. And Christ's eternal life is given to us. We can stand in this world as conquerors over self and live without sin, brethren. The power is there for us. Christ is pictured in Revelation chapter 3 and the Laodicean message is knocking at the door of your heart. Brethren, Jesus longs for you to open up the faculties of your soul. Lay aside the thoughts and the concepts of this world and let Jesus take all of your thought. Behold Him. And the Bible promises that you'll be transformed into the same image. Christ today is calling for His children. He's going to bring them into a powerful movement. And if we're faithful to that calling, there is no power in this world that can stand against us. Every obstacle will be broken in our path. And God's glorious message will go to the world. Brethren, the Lord is going to work in simple ways. He can take anybody and speak through him just as he can talk to a stone or as he talked to a donkey at the time of Balaam. Brethren, if he can talk through a donkey, he can talk through you. And you know the message that he has to give? He wants you to speak for him and invite the people in this world home. He wants you to tell them to prepare to meet their God who's coming soon. Brethren, we haven't any idea of the glories of that heavenly home. We can't imagine it. But the Holy Spirit wants us to know that God has prepared things above our greatest imagination. And there is nothing in this world that should keep you from receiving that prize. Not all the power of the Jesuits or the Catholic Church or the great communist movement. None of these things should keep you from Him. Not the worldliness, not the, the money, not family, not structure, not church, not anything. Just Jesus. And He can bring you in. And He can seal you for eternity. Let's have prayer together, shall we? Our dear and gracious God, You have opened up to the minds of this people the wonderful, wonderful truths of the great controversy. Dear Lord, help us to be faithful to the knowledge that You have given to us. Give us the strength, O Lord, to stand for Thee, for the right though the heavens fall. Not only to be ready for Your coming, but to bring hundreds and thousands of others into the fold now in these closing moments. Lord, we know by the signs of the times that it's almost over. I pray for each soul that hears this tape. And I ask that thy angels should convict and the Holy Spirit should convict their hearts of the need to total conviction now.